Hello and thank you for watching this screencast. My name is Andras Tantos and in this short video I'm going to show you how to start the Cray1 simulator I wrote for the first time. So in this uh, command window you see uh, the executable name and the configuration file that contains the various parameters for the simulator to, to run on and I will now start the simulator and soon uh, three console windows show up on the original mainframe these would be three serial terminals that were attached to various serial ports on the IO subsystem so uh, each of those show configurations of the three IO processors that were present in this particular configuration. It's IOP0, IOP1, and IOP3. IOP2 was missing in this particular setup. The first thing that you will have to enter when you boot the system is the date and the time, because it doesn't have a real-time clock installed. So uh, let's enter a date. It's really not uh, year 2 key, key compliance. I will have to enter a date prior 2000. So let's use January 1st, let's say 95. And let's say it's midnight. At this prompt, uh, you can enter uh, various commands. At this point, we have the I.O. subsystem booted, and we are communicating with the kernel running on the I.O. subsystem. The mainframe CPU is still in reset. But we still have a bunch of commands that we can use, and you, we can use the help command to list them all. Uh, for example, one that we will use is the start which uh, boots the mainframe, copies a boot image uh, into the mainframe and boots it. So let's, say, let's see what help has to say about that. It says that it has three parameters. One is the uh, operating system image, the other the parameter file, and we can optionally say that we want to edit the parameter file. So all of those files are available locally on the hard drive of the I.O. subsystem and we can take a look at that with the fstat command. Uh, the file that we would like to use is COS 1.7 1 .7, uh, version 17 version of the OS and because we are going to install a new operating system because this is the first time we run uh, the OS we have to format the hard drives we will use the install parameter file. So let's type it in start COS 1.17 and install and let's hit enter now uh, the IO subsystem copies the image into the mainframe memory the CPU is starting and a link is established between the mainframe CPU and the IO subsystem at this point we can start a new console window with the station command this would be yet another serial terminal attached to the IO subsystem but in this particular case, we are now running something called a station program that can be used to communicate with uh, the mainframe, the OS running. In here, we also have help available to show us the available commands. And this, these are a completely different set of commands. The first thing that we will have to do here is to log on to uh, establish a connection. And you see a little M appearing here on the uh, top line. It says uh, it means that we have messages from the system that we have to look at. So let's do that. Uh, the command to do that is st message, and uh, we can optionally look at commands that are used for that that need our attention or just informational messages. The first message that comes actually do need our attention. Uh, so that's why I brought up the screen that uh, contains the reply requested messages. And here uh, the system asks us whether we want to make uh, changes to the configuration. We don't. So we reply to this message by saying go. And soon another message uh, will pop up saying that we are performing an installation which means that all data on the hard drives will be destroyed and obviously the system wants to make sure that we are okay with that. 
in this case we are so we're just gonna say reply go to that as well and I'm gonna switch over to the information uh, display and here we can see certain messages coming uh, from the mainframe this uh, operation of formatting the hard drive will take a while so while it's running let's look at a few other things one thing that we can do is start a different console so let's start another console this is uh, another screen attached to the same session the same uh, uh, station session so you can think of it as a very early version of uh, Multimon but we can we can look at different uh, uh, statistics in the in the two different windows so one of them is already showing informational messages let's bring up uh, disk activity in this one the way there are several ways to look at this disk activity one is to use the monitor command and the disk argument for that and this shows us uh, the activity on the nine hard drives that are attached to uh, this particular installation and most of the the installation process is involved uh, uh, with uh, erasing the master hard drive which is the first one installed so that's why you see all the activity on the first hard drive Another view of this, uh, the same information, is to use the disk command, where you can see an itemized list of each of the hard drives and how many reads and writes have been performed, as well as which head and cylinder uh, is currently being accessed on that particular hard drive. Another thing that we can look at, which is sort of fun, is to monitor the CPU activity. Ugh. Monitor CPU. Here you will see that the main CPU, not surprisingly, spends most of its time blocked on waiting on IO operations to complete, namely the reads and writes of the various sectors of the main hard drive. We can also look at the uh, IO processor activity. where you can see the three installed and the one uninstalled CPU's uh, activity and you can see that the first uh, IO processor is rather active because I'm doing all these uh, displays on it. The second, the uh, IOP1, uh, is also fairly active because that's where all the hard drives are attached to and IOP3 is pretty much idling because it, it has not much to do. Uh, that's the, uh, the IO processor to which the tape drives have been attached in this old system. So at this point uh, I will fast forward the, the video because the installation process takes a while and it's rather boring to watch through it. So uh, let's see what it looks like when the installation has finished. All right, so if you look at the messages window, you can see that uh, the hard drives uh, got initialized. The EFT stands for Engineering Flow Table, and that would contain the bad uh, track information or the flaws uh, on the surfaces of the hard drives. And then uh, essential, uh, eventually the uh, DSC extension being made and if we look at the next frame which you can get to the plus with the plus key then you see the rest of the messages the last one being startup complete and that tells you that the system has uh, finished installing uh, and it's operational at this point so thank you very much again I hope you enjoyed this uh, short presentation